So we have a slave-owning sister on The View. Slave-owning sister. If you haven't seen this, this is just too funny. So Sonny Houston, who's been out there calling for reparations, she went on this PBS show, Finding Your Roots. I think that's the name of it. And they talk to all these celebrities, go back, get through their family history. Well, it turns out that her family owned slaves on both sides. And her family is from Spain. She's part Puerto Rican, part white. And she was shocked. She was shocked to find out that her family were slave owners. But this wasn't uncommon back in the day because you found work where you could. People who had money owned slaves, but that involved over time more into indentured servitude. Yes, people worked out in the field. Now, a good resource for this is the Georgia Slave Law, 1755 to 1860. You can find this at the Georgia State Archives site. And I highly encourage you to go through that because it's a real eye-opener to what was going on then with slavery and gentered servitude. But how many people know that Africans and poor white class laborers stood on the same ground? And the black and white women worked alongside each other in the field. Some men did too. A lot of people don't know this, but during this rift between the colonies and Great Britain, and even afterwards, after the American Revolution, Great Britain would send over their criminals to be sentenced here in the United States. And they would send them to places like Georgia and South Carolina. Black residents and white and gentered servants often shared the same status of half freedom. And here were the slave categories according to the Georgia Slave Laws, again, 1755 to 1860, Georgia State Archive site. You had Negroes, Indians, Mulattoes, and Mestizos. And this included the offspring or offspring to be born. So they were lumped into this category with slaves. Now with indentured servants, indentured servants had a contract of usually seven to ten years, but that could be extended without their knowledge. And even though indentured servants could own land, their masters could bar them from marrying. A lot of people don't know that. Now also according to Georgia slave law, the guardian would have to file suit in order for the slave to want to sue for freedom. And the burden of proof was on the plaintiff, on the slave, or possibly the indentured servant. And I believe the indentured servant could sue for freedom if, let's say, the master cheated them on their contract. So I thought I'd share this with you, but it's just funny to talk about this. So Sonny Houston, who's been out there asking for reparations, her family owned slaves. Hey, Sonny, why don't you start dishing out some of your own money for reparations? How much is she worth, by the way? I mean, she's on The View. Wouldn't it be funny if we found out that Whoopi Goldberg's family owned slaves? So a slave-owning sister on The View. How do you like that one? Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. You can also follow me at Instagram, hashtag Jason Composes, because I write music in my spare time. Or you can go to X, Culture Confederacy, at Culture Confed 1 on X. And thank you again for subscribing, watching the videos, being a part of this thing called the Culture Confederacy. But it is funny when you go back and you study history and you realize that life really wasn't all that great. I mean, they didn't have automobiles or cell phones. You didn't have trains to what, the 1820s, 1830s. And things evolved as technology evolves. So as technology was evolving in the 19th century, slavery and gendered servitude was slowly going away. In fact, indentured servitude lasted longer, if you're looking at that time period, lasted longer than slavery. I believe Delaware got rid of all forms of servitude in 1901, even though they had abolished slavery decades earlier, post-Civil War. In fact, slavery in New Jersey were the last two states to abolish slavery, late 1865, early 1866. Then you had Hawaii, 1900, with the Organic Act. 
But life was really hard back then. You, you didn't have a lot of options. As I mentioned, you know, you had to find help wherever you could. And if you were somebody who was living in Europe, going through, let's say, the uh, revolution they had in 1848, you know, you were trying to escape that, you come to the United, uh, come to the United States, and where you find work? Well, you'd have to go down to the plantations in the South where the work was, or you work in a factory where the conditions weren't the best. They didn't have child labor laws then. Who do you think the chimney sweeps were in Europe? The chimney sweeps were kids because they could fit up in the chimneys. So thank you again for being with me. As I said, I hope you enjoyed the video. Once again, you can follow me at Instagram, hashtag Jason Composes, because I write music in my spare time. As I said, or go to X, Culture Confederacy, at Culture Confed 1 on X. So thank you for being with me. Y'all have a great weekend. And may the best person win, the best team win at the Super Bowl. Catch you next time.